Well, today I want to talk about how I ended up being a maintenance technician and eventually a maintenance supervisor. Of course, I realize it's nobody's dream to be a maintenance guy one day or a maintenance tech. Of course, when we're in school, the teacher tells you you better study or you're going to end up like, like that janitor out there and guy with a whole bunch of keys, pretty much like what I carry now, a whole bunch of keys. This is something that goes with his job. It's, it's, I really, I'm a person that hates carrying keys. If I could, I wouldn't even carry one key or at least just a key in my wallet. But for this job, I got to carry a whole bunch of keys. And this video is not about keys. This video is about how I ended up being a maintenance technician. And like I said, eventually a maintenance supervisor. What happens is my original trade right out of high school. Well, even well, during high school, uh, I was a heavy equipment operator with my grandfather. I grew up with him a lot of my life and he had heavy equipment. And that's that's that was my first job ever. That's what I did. I ran a backhoe. I was really good at backhoes and loaders and stuff like that. And that was my original uh, trade. But I hated it because sometimes I had a, we, we were grading pads for concrete guys that, that were going to pour concrete and we had to, you know, level off the AB and compact it sometimes, wheel roll it and stuff like that. And I used to like how the maintenance guys were all hanging out and talking and they, they, they you know, it was a physical job. There were sledgehammers out there and and I was a teen back then. And of course, I, I, I wanted to do that. I didn't want to sit on a back wall day. I, I kind of hated it, honestly. Even though I was good at it, it wasn't something I wanted to do. So I left town. I left uh, the town I grew up in. I ended, ended up in Phoenix and I started as a concrete laborer. And eventually I became a, a concrete uh, foreman. And I, I became a foreman really fast. And I liked that, that trade when, when I was in my early 20s and all through my 20s and 30s. That's, that's what I did. I poured concrete. I did good money. I only did commercial concrete. So there's more money in commercial. So... I had a good good uh, trade. I was working, you know, all the time. And uh, since I was a good foreman, I, I understood uh, commercial concrete, which means I could do anything from structural, which is bridges or big walls or tilts and all that, to curb and gutter, to, you know, stuff like that. So I, I was really good at, you know, flat work, uh, major big flat work. So that was my trade. I did that for a whole bunch of years. And then eventually I got my license and then I started doing my own contracting. And eventually from concrete, I, 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 I evolved into contracting other work till I ended up doing complete uh, commercial buildings and homes and stuff like that. And it was, it was okay. The, the, the money was, was sometimes there and sometimes not there. Like anybody that's been a contractor, you know that you put in a lot of hours, a lot of time, and sometimes it doesn't pay off. I better put these over here. So I was doing this for a while. Now I had payroll, now I had taxes, now I had all kinds of things going on around me. Uh, my time off was really not my time off. I was always estimating and doing, you know, a lot of work, busy, busy all the time. In the meantime, I, I managed to squeeze a few years in, in between all that as a musician, as a professional musician. So I got to travel most of the United States as a drummer and, and, and I played for a band that was already famous when I joined them. And, I was just a drummer, so I don't mention that band, but it's a Norteño band, Mexican Norteño band. And, and I did good with them for a while, but I realized my family was more important than, than being a musician, even though it's anybody's dream to, you know, tour and get paid to just, you know, play an instrument. But eventually I figured out that wasn't for me, so I came back to contracting. And I was doing this for a while. My, my payroll, I hated Fridays. Everybody was Friday because you get paid, but but when you're... When you're the contractor or when you're the owner of the company, then you got to pay all the guys on Friday. So you have to have money Thursday night because Friday you got to pay everybody. And it was just, it was a lot of work and I was tired of it. But what happened is the, the last commercial building that I did, we didn't get paid. Um, it was between me and a partner and, and uh, we just didn't get paid. The lady came up with some stories, the, the person that we, the customer, and we went to the registered contractors. We, even though we wanted there, she still didn't pay. And, and that just ended up horribly. And I was in a really bad place in my life at that time. Things just weren't working out. I had just recently moved to this city. I live in Tucson right now, Tucson, Arizona. And I didn't really know a lot of people. So it was just a bad situation. The, the building was done here in Tucson. And one morning, I was just so upset. I mean, out of cash, out of money. I, I did have my rental homes that I owned, but other than that, I had really had no income. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I was really stressed and tired of being a contractor. And, and I decided, you know what? 
I'll just get a job. Just just any old job. Just anything. And I figured, you know, I've, I've, I, I've built complete buildings. I don't think, I, you know, doing, being a maintenance guy should be really, really easy. So I figured, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll do that for a couple of months while I look at, you know, what I'm going to do. I was, I was a, a tradesman before. Like I said, I was a concrete foreman for many years. But this is just something I wanted to do for a little while. So I go to my first interview. They ask me, you know, what do you know? And just like everybody else that walks in there, well, I know construction. And you're thinking, well, I know construction so I can do maintenance. It's easier. At least that's what you're thinking when you walk in. So the, the manager, I interviewed with the manager, and she asked me, well, how much experience do you have? And I said, well, I, I, I can build the whole building. And she said, well, yeah, but as a maintenance tech or a maintenance guy. I said, none. Do you know swimming pools? No. Air conditioners? No. Mm, you know, do you know how to fix a refrigerator? No. Then I realized, oh, my God, this, there's more to this than just painting walls. You know, I, at first I thought it was just painting walls and unclogging toilets and that was going to be it. So I went home and I was really upset. I was thinking, you know, it's, it's wasting my time. And this interview took like three days before, you know, when I when I call and it's like, I'll see you on Tuesday or whatever. And it, it lasts three days and I was really upset. And then they called me back and they said, can you come into the office to do a test? And I think, oh, okay, well, then I'll, I'll prove to them I, I know construction. And, you know, they'll hire me. So I go in there, I, I do this test, and it was really, really hard. I mean, a lot of questions, like pool questions, HVAC questions, and requirements and laws, and I didn't know any of it. So again, I go home and I'm really upset. I'm thinking, man, this is just a waste of time. I don't know. So I started looking for other things. A few weeks go by, and all of a sudden, this, the same company called me, and they, they asked me, can you come in for a second interview? And I'm thinking, well, that's odd because why would they interview me? I don't have no experience in that. Little did I know that they were just shorthanded. They just needed people, you know, anybody. So I go in the office and then she, the, the, the regional supervisor, who I really, you know, she's a really, really great person now, now that I know her, but at that moment I didn't. And she's, you know, you did okay on the test, she said, and I was kind of amazed because I, I just guessed on it. And she said, I'm going to send you to a property. You're going to meet this manager. They don't. They only have window units. It's window ACs, and I want you to go meet this manager and see if she likes you, and she if see if she'll hire you. So I'm thinking, oh, this is not gonna work out. You know, she's not gonna like me. I I already know the first manager that I met. She didn't like me. So I went out there and she interviewed me, and I could tell she didn't really want to hire me, but it seemed like she just needed somebody there. So she said, yeah, I'll give you a day, uh, 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 an opportunity. We'll test you for 90 days, see how you're doing. If, if, if you're going to be hired as a subcontractor for 90 days, after 90 days, if you're doing good, then the company will hire you. And well, I didn't have anything else to do, so I said, well, I'll try it. And I remember they asked me, how much do you want to make? And I was like, I wasn't expecting to make any money at this job. This is just something I wanted to do temporarily. I didn't want to stay here, so I said... I don't know, what, what do you guys offer? And I think, and I know I started at $14 an hour back then. And this is only five years ago. So I haven't been a maintenance tech for, for that long. So they hired me, I started. I remember the, the first day, my first work order that, you know, the office called me said there's a, a, a stuck garbage disposal. And I remember there, they had a temporary guy there that wasn't a, a working for the company, he was just a temp. And I asked him, I said, man, there's a, a stuck garbage disposal, what do I do? He said, man, I'm gonna loan you this wrench. He loaned me the garbage disposal wrench and said, the underneath there, there's, there's, there's a little, there's a red button, push it. If, if, you, if it's humming, don't, don't bother with that. Just stick this wrench in there right in the middle and, and, and loosen it. And then make sure the switch is off. And then once, once it's loose, then, then you can flip it on and it should be okay. He said, just fresh a little bit of D40 in there and it'll be okay. So that was my first work order. And needless to say, I started doing that for a while and I was doing okay. And, you know, I was learning a lot. YouTube, YouTube is the best teacher there's out there. I, it, it was just me with 104 units. That's it. There's no teacher. There's, there's no other tech. It was just me with 104 units. So it wasn't easy, 
But with YouTube, with my phone, I always say the best tool, the, the one and only tool, if I could only keep one tool of all the tools I have, it would be my phone because that's where, all the, that's where I got out my information. And now I share it with you guys, the homeowners and everybody, but still this is, this is where, I, where I got my, my information originally. So I started doing that, and then I brought a friend over, an ex-employee of mine, and then another friend over, and they were sent to bigger properties that had more maintenance guys, and they were getting paid more than me. They started off at 16 while I started off at 14, which, honestly, I was really upset about because I knew I had more experience in construction, much more than them. Not in maintenance, but, but in general construction, I had more experience but they were still making more money than me. And I remember I called the manager, asked her, you know, what's going on? How, how come these guys that are, are, are already making more money than me? And they just started. She said, well, it all depends on the property where you're at, depending on the budget. And I was thinking, well, it's not my fault. I got sent to, you know, this place with window units. So you could imagine what the property was like. And she said, well, I'm sorry. You know, that's, it's what it is. And it, I was really getting upset. And I, I had worked, you know, six eight months somewhere in there and i was you know ready to start looking for something else because i figured man i'm stuck here they're never going to move me from this property because i was doing good by then they're never going to move me from this property i'm going to be stuck you know in, in this property that has no budget for a long time and that's not something I, I was interested in and i remember one day there was a major leak major water leak underground leak and they called the plumbers and what happened is there was a, a water line that ran a major, main water line. And this water line fed all the buildings, four buildings. But it was 104 units total, but there was four, four separate buildings. And this water line fed all the buildings. So you had to shut the, the water off for the whole property to fix that line. And it was a big, big humongous tree. And the plumbers went out there and they said, you know what? We can't do anything till you guys remove that tree. And this was on a Friday. So we can't do anything that that tree's in the way. If you don't remove that tree, then there's nothing we can do. And I remember I asked the manager, you know what? Can I have a shot at it? You know, over the weekend, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of this. And my idea was, okay, this, this main water line runs under the tree. All you got to do is reroute the water line. Instead of, instead of knocking out the tree, I was just going to reroute the water line. And this was like a two-inch main, so it was a pretty big water line. And she said, well, let me ask the regional. So she called the regional. The regional says, you know what? We got nothing to lose. Because the guys, the plumbers, they left. And they left the water running. The, the, the complex still had water. Not a lot of pressure, but a lot of water was spilling out into the street. And I told the manager, because that I did know. The codes, I, to I told her, if the city comes out of here, they're going to shut it off. They're going to require permits. It's going to be a lot of work to get it running again. So we might as well just give it a shot. If the city comes out here and we're working on it, we shut it off, then we have a better chance of them, you know, but if we're just letting the water run down the street, first of all, we live in the desert. We don't want to do that. Second of all, the city comes out here. They are going to shut it down. They are going to turn it off and shut it off, and then it's, it's going to be difficult. So she said, go ahead. And, and what I did is I started digging. I shut the water off for the whole property for a little bit. I, I put a cap on it. I could actually turn three buildings on, three buildings on after this cap, and it was going to be okay for three buildings, but I would still have like 25 units without water. And I, I put, a, I put a, a cap with a valve, and after that valve, I, I, I fed into one of the water spigots. I, I fed water to the whole building. Nobody had a lot of water, but there was still water in the building, and the other three buildings, the other 75 units or 78, whatever, had water. So at least I had gotten water Saturday morning to most of the property, and the last building had a little bit of water, but still they could use their toilets at least. So to make a long story short, plumber comes out Monday morning, I was getting ready to open the, the water because I had put some kickers on my corners and all that because I knew there was going to be a lot of pressure when I opened it up to feed the last building where I had rerouted around the tree. The plumber comes out uh, Monday morning and he sees all the plumbing in there and he says that I got kickers on all my corners because I'm just a lot of pressure. And it turns out I was opening the water when he showed up. And he asked me, are you a plumber? He said, no, I told him I'm the maintenance guy here. He said, well, how do you know plumbing? I said, well... I build buildings, so I understand the codes, I understand plumbing, but I'm not a plumber, but, you know, I can do something like this. So the guy told me, you know what, do you want a job with us? I really, here in my company, I don't really have anybody that could do, that would do something like that, especially not on the weekend. And I said, well, how much would you offer me? And he gave me a number. 
And I said, you know what, let me think about it. I'll, I'll talk to my manager. I'll put in my two-week notice. And yeah, I'll start with you guys. So when the manager showed up Monday morning, I told her, you know what? I got an offer from the plumbers. And I mean, they're going to pay me much more than, than what you guys pay me here. And obviously, I'm just going to do the one thing, just plumbing. And she said, oh, no, 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 hold on, hold on. So she, she spoke to the regional. And the regional said, no, give, give, him, give him what he wants. And they got me more money. So the... The property can afford more. They don't want to. They'll tell you there's no budget, but it could afford more. So, because of that, because, and that, and other things that I had proved myself that I could, you know, do a lot of work or, or learn stuff really fast, stuff that other guys would say, well, I don't know how to do that. Then I'd take out my phone and I'd watch a video and I'd figure it out and I'd fix it. Once you got the tools, once you got somebody showing you, it's pretty simple to do almost anything. So eventually they gave me more money. I stayed at that property. There was were one maintenance guy in the whole company that, that I would call my mentor. And he's still my mentor in a lot of things. Um, but he knows a lot of HVAC. And what happened is he quit in, within a year of me starting, he quit. And there was that opening at that property. And the regional said, do you want to go over to that property? And I said, I wish I could. But they have, you know, gas packs. And I have no experience in gas packs. And and I can't fill his shoes, you know. I'm, I'm honest with you, and it's, it's too much for me. So she said, no, no, I'm sure you can do it. You'll pick it up, no, no time at all. And I, I think, man, this lady has a lot, of, a lot of trust in me, but I don't, I didn't feel confident. But I said, you know what, yeah, you know what, just move me over there. there there's more money, they're going to pay me more. And even though I wasn't HVAC certified at that time, and I, I didn't have any experience, I said, it's just a challenge. If, if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. I'm just, it's just a maintenance job. So I moved there. I started watching a whole bunch of YouTubes. I, I, certif I got certified for, HV a, a, for a HVAC, which, which I know. I know it, the, 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 the certificate means nothing. I already know that. But I had studied before I, was even cert before I even took the, the test. I already knew a lot because I was, you know, going through the Going through all the YouTube videos I could find day and night. And I was watching videos or listening to videos and learning a lot. Then when I took the test, it was pretty simple because, because I already knew the concepts of what everybody was talking about. So the test was pretty easy. Then I, I got EPA certified and, and I started working on units. The company started using me on different complexes because now that I was EPA certified and they figured out, man, this guy will fix anything. I started moving up really fast in that company. And of course, like everything else, friends of mine that, that I knew from, from before that I didn't even know. One of the guys, I didn't know he was an, into uh, maintenance. And he called me and said, man, I saw you on Facebook. I know that you can now you do maintenance. You want to work for, for our company because he, he was going to get a bonus if he, if he brought people in. I said, yeah, why not? You know, if they pay. Of course, they offered me more money. I went over to his company. And then the first company I worked for, they offered me more money to come back after about six months. And, and from then on, I was just jumping around companies, you know, making more money every time, which, which is what we all work for. You know, I have some friends that have been in the same company for 20, 25 years, and they think I'm crazy because I jump around. And I think they're crazy because they're stuck in one, in one rate and they're not going to make more money because, because nobody's going to offer you a $3 raise for no reason. They'll give you a dollar a year or 50 cents or whatever, but once you move companies and they figure out they need you, they'll, they'll offer you more money. So that's what I did. And that's how I ended up, you know, eventually I became a maintenance supervisor and I've been doing that for a couple of years now. I think I moved up pretty fast, but the whole point of this video is this is not something I wanted to do. Honestly, this is not my, this was not my dream job at one time at a, one of the complexes, uh, the owner, because this company was managing it. So the, the actual owner of the company, the lady asked me, so what's your dream job? And that kind of offended me because I already had my dream job. I was already a musician. I was a drummer. I got to travel a lot and just that's all I did for some time. I already had my dream job. Unclogging toilets for that property was not my dream job. Never going to be. This is not my dream job. I do it. I do. I love what I do because it's, it, I take pride in it, but it's not my dream job. It's nobody's dream job, but it, it pays me now. I'm, now, I've been tempted to go to HVAC companies, 
But honestly, I, I do more money than some of the HVAC techs that I know. So I might as well just stay here. I became pretty good at it. I could go somewhere else and eventually make more money if I had to, you know, sell, upsell, you know, equipment and stuff like that. I'm not interested in that. I'm, I'm okay where I'm at. I, I'm, I have other sources of income, but, but the income here is still pretty good. So that's why I stay here. So what I'm trying to say is that I moved up in something I didn't really love back then just because I was willing to learn, willing to learn, willing to move up, willing to do what other guys wouldn't do, do doing what even the, the uh, vendors or the contractors wouldn't do. I was willing to do that. And honestly, that's, that's, that's my story. That's, that's how I ended up being a, a maintenance guy. It wasn't my dream, but I'm here and I'm still living the dream. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.